good morning in my previous video we have studied the medial surface of the brain using a diagram here we'll see the dermo using a specimen so in the medial surface of the brain so this is the cerebral hemisphere the medial surface of the cerebral hemisphere we have the anterior pole we have the posterior pole and we can see this temporal pole here okay in the middle surface, we can see only the two prominent poles, this is the anterior pole and the posterior pole. Now, the two cerebral hemispheres are connected in the midline by means of this white commercial fiber, is the largest white commercial fiber called the corpus callosum. So, we have discussed the parts of the corpus callosum. Here, the bend of the corpus callosum is called the genu. And this anterior part, which is ending up to the anterior commissure here, this is the anterior commissure and this is the anterior end. So, this area is called the rostral end, rostrum of the corpus callosum. This is the genu and this is the trunk. And this posterior dilated part is called the splenium of the corpus callosum. Now, we will see below the corpus callosum, we can see the septum, you can see the septum which is extending between the corpus callosum and this mass of white matter which is extending from the splenium towards the anterior part. You see this? And it will be ending here will be ending here and this white matter and this white matter which is coming like this is actually the fornix the fornix so this septum is extending between the corpus callosum inferiorly and the fornix you can see this is a septum so this is a septum pellucidum this is a septum pellucidum next in front of the septum uh, just at the end of the fornix you can see the fornix is ending in a gap you can see there is a gap which is a connection between the lateral ventricle. You can see behind the septum pellucidum we have the gap called the lateral ventricle. You can see the gap called the lateral ventricle. So the lateral ventricle is communicating with the third ventricle which is below the fornix. Here, this is the third ventricle, area of the third ventricle by means of this communication called the interventricular foramen. This communication is called the interventricular foramen. This interventricular uh, foramen is nothing but a communication between the lateral ventricle, two lateral ventricles and the third ventricle. Next, we will come just below the fornix. You can see a bulged portion here on its posterior aspect. On the posterior aspect, we have a bulged portion and this bulged portion is called the thalamus. It's a grey matter, it's a bulged portion here which is called the thalamus. And this anterior part of this grey bulged portion is having a communication with the opposite side. You can see the cut part of the communication here and this is called the interthalamic adhesion. This adhesion is called the interthalamic adhesion. This area is the thalamus and this is called the interthalamic adhesion. Okay. Which helps in the communication between the two thalamus. Now anterior to this thalamus, you can see this region and through inferiorly we have this region in front of the thalamus called the hypothalamus so this area is the hypothalamus which is separated from the thalamus by a sulcus here called the hypothalamic sulcus so the hypothalamus sulcus is separating the thalamus from the hypothalamus so this area is the hypothalamus now if you see this third ventricle it is bounded anteriorly by from this commissure you can see this commissure forms the upper part of the anterior aspect from here you can see the white fiber which is extending downwards this white fiber which is extending downwards called the lamina terminalis so from the anterior commissure the fiber which is extending downwards this part is called the lamina terminalis this lamina terminalis is ending in this area you can see this one can you see the nerve here is actually the optic nerve actually the optic nerve that is the optic nerve which is the optic chiasma so we can see it is ending in the chiasma optic chiasma okay so that much forms the anterior boundary for the third ventricle then inferiorly if you see this anterior boundary is sorry the from the chiasma we can see if you follow posteriorly we can see this area this is the hypothalamus uh, this is the pituitary gland you can see this is the pituitary gland which forms the inferior aspect you can see the pituitary gland then we can see this is actually the crest cerebri 
actually the crest cerebri now post uh, this forms the inferior border so this is the inferior boundary of the third ventricle if you go posteriorly you can see there is a gland which is there on the posterior aspect a body called the pineal gland or the pineal border which will be present here now it is missing you can see this area has a gland here there is a pineal gland or the pineal body which is forming the posterior boundary and this pineal gland is ending in this commissure here called the posterior commissure you can see this is a posterior commissure if you follow downwards this area so that much is about the boundaries of the third ventricle now we saw the third ventricle on either side of the third ventricle we have it is bounded by the thalamus and the hypothalamus that already we have discussed now this part is called the midbrain you can see this is a midbrain we have the superior inferior colliculus here and next we have this is the pons the pons the cerebellum now we saw the ventricles the lateral ventricle then the third ventricle here now the third ventricle communicates to the fourth ventricle so this is the fourth ventricle communicates to the, this is the fourth ventricle cavity of the fourth ventricle the third ventricle communicates to the fourth ventricle by means of this aqueduct called the aqueduct of silvius the aqueduct of silvius Next, we'll study the salsae and gyrae which are present in the medial aspect of the cerebral hemisphere. If you take this <coughs> section, this is the anterior end, and the anterior pole is the posterior pole. Okay, it's the occipital pole. Now, if you see, this is the corpus callosum. It's the anterior end of the corpus callosum. This is the rostrum, this is the genum, this is the trunk, and the splenium. Just above the corpus callosum, we have a sulcus called the callosal sulcus. You can see this is actually the callosal sulcus. Callosal sulcus. Okay. Just above the callosal sulcus, above the callosal sulcus, we have one more sulcus which is running from the splenium in the same direction as the, the callosal sulcus, parallel to the callosal sulcus, and it ends, ends posterior to this cut part you can see this is actually the central sulcus this is actually the central sulcus which is ending here it's ending here this is the central sulcus which is ending here and behind the central sulcus it ends as an upturn here which is called as the this entire sulcus is called the cingulate sulcus it's the cingulate sulcus this cingulate sulcus has got one more upturn here in this area. You can see this. Before the end, behind the central sulcus. So this is the central sulcus. Behind the central sulcus, we have one more upturn here. And the area between on either side of the central sulcus, which is bounded by the two upturns of the cingulate sulcus, is called the paracentral lobule so it is bit on either side of the central sulcus on either side of the central sulcus we have the paracentral lobule so this much region is called paracentral lobule next we have two gyrus in relation to these two sulcus one is between the callosal sulcus and the cingulate sulcus we have this gyrus called the cingulate gyrus this gyrus is called cingulate gyrus and above the cingulate gyrus so, or you can tell above this sulcus the cingulate sulcus above the cingulate sulcus and below the supramedial margin supramedial border we have this gyrus is called medial frontal gyrus so, this is called the medial frontal gyrus which will be extending till this limit till the paracentral lobule so this much is the medial frontal gyrus so the medial frontal gyrus. So it's the medial frontal gyrus extending up to the para. This is the paracentral lobule extending in front of the paracentral lobule. So these are the gyrus which are in relation to these two sulcus. Next, we'll go posteriorly. If you go posteriorly, we have a very prominent sulcus which is extending, which is extending from behind the splenium up to behind the splenium up to the see, you can see behind the splenium up to the occipital pole 
and this sulcus and this sulcus is called the the calcarine sulcus so this is a calcarine sulcus which is extending behind the splenium and it is going all the way till the occipital pole called the calcarine sulcus and if you see there is one more sulcus which is extending from the calcarine sulcus towards posteriorly which is dividing the occipital region and the parietal region this is the occipital part and this is the parietal part and this sulcus is called the parieto occipital sulcus which is dividing the occipital part from the parietal part so parieto occipital sulcus so between these two sulcus we, there is a triangular area there is a triangular area which is enclosed between these two sulcus called the cuneus this area is called the cuneus in front of the cuneus this parietal region parietal region is divided by a sulcus here you can see this is the sulcus which is dividing the parietal region the upper part and the lower part into a upper part and a lower part this sulcus is dividing the parietal region into upper part and a lower part and this sulcus is present right behind the splenium right behind right above the splenium so it is called as suprasplenial sulcus so this is called suprasplenial sulcus and the area above the suprasplenial sulcus here is called the precuneus so this is the cuneus and this area above the suprasplenial sulcus is called precuneus cuneus precuneus this is a paracentral lobule okay now the area below the suprasplenial sulcus here this area is continuous with that of the callosal uh, with that of the cingulate gyrus so this is a cingulate gyrus is a continuation of the cingulate gyrus in the small region here between the splenius splenium and the splenium of the corpus callosum and the sulcus here this area is called the isthmus is called the isthmus so that's all about the sulci and gyri which are present in the superolateral uh, in the medial aspect of the brain thank you